the Sunday morning coffee happening all around the world, isn't it? And it's quite healthy here in Florence. Oh, that's good. Expat lifestyle with bads. As always, thumbs up, subscribe, bell notifications on. I hope you enjoy this episode. Sunday morning, doesn't matter where you are in the world, it's time to go out for a coffee. No different here in Florence, and here in Florence we're certainly spoilt for options. We currently go to about two or three different cafes, uh, rotate them uh, over, the, uh, over the weekends. This current one, it's a lovely walk. You just saw through Republican and I'll just show you where we are now. Walking past Palazzo Vecchio where we see the uh, David replica. And the cafe is just the other side of the Uffizi Museum which is just here too. Uh, it's a part of the coin department store but in the Loggia outside. It's really good they, um, this time of year you get a little blankie, put on your, your legs, keep yourself warm, little heater above, quite cosy, good way to start the day. Let's go check it out. Yes, yeah, so to get to this cafe, it's a lovely walk, isn't it? The Fissy Museum, directly ahead. And let's look, it's um, 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning. It's going to be busy in there. Underneath the Vasari Corridor. So directly ahead is Dineri. That street is where you can buy your um, paninis or most people who come to Florence seem to go to those two or three panini shops it's packed during the day for sure and here's the coin department store and the outside log here is where we get our coffee and we've been hitting this spot for the last two or three weeks I think Manchetti that's what it's called Manchetti bar and bakery open there you go let's go in and check it out And look, this is our normal spot just here. Very cosy. We'll get the heater on shortly. So after this lovely coffee and, and pastry, I'm going to take you to a, a palace called uh, Palazzo Davanzanti. It's in the square or Piazza Davanzanti, same name. It's a palace that goes back to the 1300s and it's now a museum. I think you're going to enjoy having a look at what's in there and it's a great um, another option for you to visit because it's in the heart of the historical centre of Florence. And just around the corner is the old Odeon Theatre that has now been transformed into a bookstore. But the twist is they still play um, oh, Disney movies and you can sit down there and take your computer in, in lovely chairs, lovely setting and just catch up on your emails and, and so on. So again, if you're a bit tired and you've had a big day of uh, touring here in, in Florence, you can go to the Odeon Theatre, sit down, put the feet up, we've got the big screen playing and you can really relax in, in comfort the Odeon Theatre Bookstore, a great place to just chill for an hour or so. Now what about the weather hey, we can't book this, good umbrella, comes in handy on days like today and look, um, incidentally, we don't get too many rainy days here in Florence. Now I'm off to the Palazzo, the palace, Davanzanti. It's a 14th century uh, palace that the nobility lived in. It's now a, a museum. And it's in the aptly named Piazza Davanzanti. And, um, so I'm interested to see what this, what this museum is really like inside. A little snapshot into what the upper class people lived in back in the 1300s. And actually next to this museum is a great little eatery called the Brewster, not really a, a great Italian 
and it's sounding place to eat. But if you're looking for a hamburger and one of the cheapest uh, spritzes in the historic centre of Florence, the Rooster is a place to go. Along with the spritz you get the aperitivo, so some nibblies, all inclusive for about six or seven euro. That's not too bad. We're at the uh, we're at the museum right now. I'm standing in a beautiful square piazza Davanzati, and that building directly behind me, Palazzo Davanzati. That building was built in the 1300s. It's now a museum, and it's showcasing, I guess, what the nobility um, lived in back in the 1300s. It's really great to uh, visit, and this particular piazza, Davanzati, Republica, two or three minute walk. Duomo, four or five minute walk. Uh, Ponte Vecchio, four or five minutes walk. So it's quite central. So I'm going to turn the camera around and uh, show you the facade, because yesterday I went on a little visit throughout, and I want you to view the footage that's about to be shown to you. The Palazzo da Vanzanti, it's now a museum. Six euro to get in, it's in the middle of the historical centre of Florence. It's well worth a visit. Let's go check it out. The spacious and refined 14th century courtyard. We can see three doors fitted with wrought iron gates, which allowed the entry of the animals carrying supplies from the countryside. The spacious and refined 14th century courtyard holds the prestigious staircase that led to the private rooms of the house and that's where the museum now is located. The kitchens of medieval palaces were located on the upper floors due to the considerable risk of fire and to allow smoke and other smells to disperse more easily. Close by we can see the large bellows used for stoking the fire meals which consisted mainly of cereals bread, vegetables and fruit, although, as the family here was affluent, meat and fish were also frequently part of the diet. Kitchen, big setup, a uh, big place in winter, a warm place, a place to hang out, I would think. The bed has been a sign of wealth. The richer the nobleman, the better the bed which is probably why many people still aspire to owning a four-poster bed, the bed of kings and the king of beds. And the curtains, mostly to keep out insects and to obviously provide insulation from the cold. And of note, in this palace, Davanzati, every floor had a bathroom Every bedroom had its own ensuite. Quite the luxurious palace. Hey, if you feel like a cuppa, I'll just uh, light the fire. Put the kettle on. So the well-lit corner over here is where the ladies of the uh, palace would sit and do their sewing and needlework. Now the wall decorations of the Palazzo of Anzanti's painted rooms have been partially concealed by layers of whitewash. They were discovered, restored and returned to their original pictorial state during renovation work on the palace that started in 1904. So all of this beautiful work had been painted over. What a great feat of restoration, isn't it? Uh, the question begs, uh, why would you paint over it? Alright, you just can't get away from it, can you? A little bit of graffiti from the 15th, 16th century. And up here, high on the wall, is reference to the 1478 uh, Patsy Conspiracy. So that inscription there is 1478 and it 26th of April and it discusses the Patsy conspiracy whereby Guillermo Medici was um, stabbed to death in the Duomo and his brother escaped. So there is the museum of the Palazzo Davanzati. Next, next to it is a nice little restaurant that uh, you could also visit. Typically not a very um, Florentine name, the Rooster. And look, if you're hanging out for a uh, hamburger and fries, 
you can sneak in there too. It is quite popular. Now, from this piazza, Davanzati, just around the corner, see where that car is there, is the old Odeon Theatre. And it's been turned into a bookshop. But they have fantastic areas for you to sit down in, in comfort, while an old uh, Disney movie is running and you can um, just chill for an hour or two, upload your photos, check your emails, update your status, and, and just enjoy putting your feet up. Here it is just here. So here's the Odeon Theatre, just here. And to give you some context, the Republica, the carousel, it's literally behind me. Um, one minute, two minute walk. Lovely old theatre going back over a hundred years and it's been converted into a bookstore and a, a relaxed lounge areas. I wonder what uh, Disney movie is playing today. Looks like, looks like Mulan to me. see upstairs you've got the lovely little relaxing lounge chairs where you can just put your feet up for a while kids might enjoy this one too um, most of the books are obviously in Italiano but I know up near the stage there's a section and I'll show you that right now so directly ahead underneath the stage area are uh, books in English that can be purchased too so it's a wonderful old theatre and they've um, I guess put some life back into it by converting it into this lovely bookstore and there you go great idea now I'm going to head up there now and just chill for a bit So I think this is a great place for you to drop into and just put your feet up for an hour or two to relax, uh, reflect on what you've been doing, what you've seen, upload some photos, check in with email, check in with people at home and so on. And just enjoy a bit of quiet time. And if you're travelling with kids, I think they'll love it here. They really do. Now I'll put the address, the details, in the video description below, as I will for the, uh, the coin uh, coffee place too. Expat Life Solid Pads. Thumbs up, subscribe, bell notifications on. But I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Ciao.